Welcome to Zeta's fully committed survival run. Today's map is Regicide at Train Citadel, and I'm playing as a knight with a war axe. The map is somewhere in the middle in regarding survival runs, mainly due to it being rarely played, at least by me. There are only two ballistas, one inside the city and one outside the city gates. And uh, you can easily fall down the bridge which is connected to the main castle gates. So without further ado, let's start. The first objective of this map is capturing the front line. That basically means that we have to overpower the enemy in this particular area. It's not too hard. Uh, usually map never ends here. So there is a tower on the right side. Usually enemy friendlies can only stay there and uh, they'll capture the objective just fine. My job is uh, to thin enemy alliance as much as possible. And so far I'm doing a great job. War Axe is very suited for this position. Um, basically uh, it deals additional damage to armor, not as much as blunt weapons, but still very substantial. Also it does cleaving damage, so it's a really good weapon, an S tier weapon. War Axe, so if you're not sure what you want to play, you can go with War Axe, but you also have to do some overheads with it. It actually excels in overheads. I quickly got to the right side, if there was no shield put on the ground, I probably scored a triple hit on the enemy, but last that did not happen. So I will take back to the objective and try to get my health back to full and then I can rejoin the fight. So this is the only ammo crate in this objective. So yeah, not really a uh, well thought of uh, area actually. I thought there'd be more, but uh, it's not. So just this, the only ammo crate is there where I took the benches from. So now again, a hit um, and then I try to go back to the line as much as possible, so I would not be overextended. Got rid of an enemy, uh, got additional points for using my horn ability, which healed a lot of friendlies. And now we captured the objective, so we go to the next one. The next objective involves us pushing the battering ram towards the castle gates. So far it's going swimmingly, actually it's going too fast. Uh, that might indicate that I won't be able to score a lot of kills in this run if I'm successful, but so far it's going well. Uh, the attacker team, I'm not sure if it's tagged, but it's going. The progress is really spectacular. Let's see. So <laughs> this stage also is very, very poor in ammo crates. There is one ammo crate, at least that I know, on the left side of the road, uh, next to those uh, wooden barricades. But other than that, there is none. So again, very poor uh, or misjudgment regarding the number of armor crates. Now this is a good enemy with a Highlander sword. There's a lot of uh, dashing, so hopefully his stamina is soon over. But he is doing well, it's very hard to hit him with my quite short range weapon, especially when friendlies are in the way. I know my favorite, uh, get behind the back of the enemy and attack. Now if I had a blunt weapon there, uh, I would not have killed him, but with this weapon I could, because it went even through friendlies. So yeah, axes are really good. Actually all uh, cleaving weapons are good. And axes especially because they do a lot of damage too. So uh, we're doing fine, we're already on the bridge. This is the bridge from which you can fall down and actually get very low in terms of HP. You can break your ankles. And uh, it's very minimal place to fight. Also there is Ballista on the left side that actually tries to get to this place. Uh, stab with an axe, dealt around 70 HP, which is spectacular. Too much actually, in my view. Oh well. The Ballista is not mounted for some reason, so enemy team is slacking off a bit. There is Archer peppering in this place too, so I have to move, not stand still. I don't have a shield. So just moving is enough. Now my drags connect really well. Unfortunately I didn't get the kill. Um, it wasn't kill steel, it's okay. There are quite a few friendlies here too. Now remember I'm out of bandages, so I rotate back to the only ammo crate I know. And get it. Of course I can go inside the castle itself with a broken wall. But I don't want to do it just yet. Because uh, it's close to enemy spawn. And I might not return from there. And this place is actually very secure. Except that there's a good person mounting Ballista. 
So then it's challenging. But at the moment I see that it is not well mounted. Now a bit of uh, poking inside the uh, castle wall. But nothing major here. Now I want to prevent the enemies from going behind our friend Lisk who are mounting the battering ram. And also trying to see if there are anything else challenging our position. At the moment it looks good. Uh, our friendlies are on the battering ram and managed to finish uh, the objective, the break at the gate. Close quarter fights. Uh, I got rid of some infantry that actually stood behind the objective. Again, and one more. So, uh, after stragglers are gone, uh, we can proceed further. So, this is where the labyrinth is. It's quite a few uh, places in that rubble. We can go all around. Some of them uh, have access already, the others do require a powder keg, uh, which can be used to blow up some objective. Uh, I'll show you. Actually, it gives quite a lot of points, 250. That's a lot for objective. So now I've got three 250 points. And then uh, the wall will be blown there, and we can continue inside. Not bad, the enemy drags well. And now I use my bandage and want to heal up again. So in a sense this objective involves actually us pushing forward through this rubble, destroying some walls, uh, pushing the enemy back, and then destroying a statue at the end of this objective. Quite very well thought of, but uh, it's a bit tricky to get this uh, part of the map understand it. So the main idea is that the enemy can come from any place, so you have to have your situational awareness on point when playing for survival. I saw enemy mingle between us and just got rid of him. Looked at left, looked at right for another engagement opportunity. I wounded the enemy and did not receive two kills, but now I can receive two kills. Now the other hit with a pole axe did not land, but mine hit did. On the right side there is a, you see, <laughs> an item that can kill you, or me, and my ruin my throttle run. So I'd rather get rid of it by triggering it. And we tried to sally out through uh, the barricade, but unfortunately his position was bad. I'm not sure why people actually do charge into uh, scores of enemies. I know, they are empowered by movies, such as Rambo, and Braveheart, and whatnot. But this is not how it works here. You have to be either in good company, or you shouldn't attack in such position. You put yourself in disadvantage, and there is no need to risk your life. Unless you're really, really good, but even top-tier players cannot survive one against four. At least against the semi not brain dead opponents. That's why I don't fight one against four, and you shouldn't either. Now I'm a bit out of stamina and a bit out of health, and we need to wait until I'm healed up. And he has incurred quite a lot of stamina hit, but did not do anything regarding damage. My side swing did not connect due to the wall. I perfectly blocked the enemy thrown weapon, but unfortunately my stamina was not sufficient, so I instead I received damage. Now with a feint I was able to finish him. And not a bad player, again, but his position was really terrible. He could not escape from here. Anyway, we, uh, I wrote that it was a good fight. I will continue forward into deep into objective. So now I think that's a stage where we have to put the kegs on the, next to the statue and blow it up. At the moment it's almost impossible because there's quite a few enemies and I'll to try to weed out as many as I can. We're going left right, uh, scoring hits, not necessarily need to kill them, just incur a lot of damage so friendlies can kill them. Team effort, again overhead with a pole weapon did not work. It's a bit tricky uh, with those, uh, especially if you are accelerating an overhead. It can be too quick and you won't hit it. So practice more, especially against moving opponents. I know it's not the hardest, not the easiest thing to do. Also, you can do drag overheads. Then the chances of you hitting somebody 
increases them dramatically. And now I'm returning back to the fight. Uh, there is a balli second ballista on the right side, but it's now mounted at buff friendly, so I don't need to pay much attention at it. Got a hit, and also a friendly javelin in the back. Luckily, there is an ammo crate right here, right next to the objective. It's specially placed for attackers, so it's easy for us to replenish our health and continue the fight. Um, I scored a really quick hit or from repost, I think, and that uh, does not bode well, so since I'm next to the crate, I can easily replenish, no problem. And I'm just uh, doing the wicked sick. <laughs> yeah, destroying enemies uh, mega kill, but actually there was just uh, three kills and one knock. Uh, not, not one knock, but one takedown. That's still a very good performance, so I released quite a few friendlies. And helping as much as I can, but also not trying to compromise on my overall objective of survival. And then we are not doing well. There's still four minutes left of this objective, and we almost did it. This is actually the place where defenders are able to defend with a competent team quite often. But apparently, our team is better. So, this is another ammo crate for this objective. Also, very convenient. It shields you from archers and any ranged opponent. Throwing daggers to additionally. Give me advantage. And I'm chosen as Argon because I'm first in the scoreboard for my team. And still called two kills after that. So Argon is like super duper hero. <laughs> what he does is deals immense amount of damage with his uh, longsword. Even simple hits have additional damage to enemies. You can see plus 100%. So if all we had usually would deal just um, 70 damage, the heavy overhead here does I think 140 or 130. That's really immense amount of damage. There you go, a simple stab, just 110 damage. So there is damage amplification and I think it's to ensure that uh, the hero is able to dish out a lot of damage when fighting against a lot of opponents, and I mean a lot. I think my highest score with this, uh, with Argon, was something around 80 kills and just one death. But it's not important, uh, just enjoying the game and immense overpowered hero. I was able to get him into the place where Molric usually hides here, scours, because he's afraid of straight up fight. I have to go and fetch him myself. I'm able to do some damage. But I'm also being peppered by... Oh no, that's actually... Oh, I killed friendly. <laughs> that happens. I mean, he shouldn't have bled. Uh, bleeding made him red and also he was on fire. So I was a bit panicking too. Because someone was hacking into my back. Also, for heroes, uh, don't forget they don't flinch after being hit. So the hit is not cancelled. So you can just power through if you have enough health. So I did a substantial amount to Molric, also team is doing a lot of damage to him too. And I mean, in the meanwhile I can kill a lot of friend enemies, ensure that friendlies also can uh, join up and attack the uh, Molric. I did uh, one more team kill, unfortunately these things happen, my, just, my weapon is just too powerful. In team kills too. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so here's quite a lot of enemies. I'm not sure. Well, you see, I'm just swinging left to right, left to right, and almost ignoring all hits. My overhead did not connect, but that doesn't matter. One, two, again, really overpowered weapon, I think. Such hero is broken, of course. But in this map is somehow, um, somehow balanced, and that's mainly because enemy spawn is really close. Enemy uh, hero almost doesn't have any more the HP left. I have Order around triple what he has and that's him. And I killed Molly too. So very quick map, uh, 49 kills on my behalf. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.